Okay, welcome back forensic students. Today our focus is on forensic anthropology. So we are looking specifically at bones and skeletal remains and how these bones and skeletal remains can be used to help solve a crime or help identify missing persons. Uh, and so we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the role of a forensic anthropologist and then anthropology in general. So bones are remarkably durable and they undergo an extremely slow breakdown process that can last for decades, even centuries. So because of their resistance to decomposition, skeletal remains can provide a multitude of individual characteristics long after a person's death. Um, our skeletons support our bodies, they anchor our muscles, they provide internal uh, protection for our internal organs. And skeletal remains, if they're found, can give investigators clues into how a person lived, who they were, and then ultimately how they might have died. So forensic anthropology is a division of science that seeks to identify human remains. Um, and this has been used for years to help identify human remains. Uh, one example is with the September 11th fatalities. So we had thousands of victims that were uh, part of the attack on the World Trade Center. And so we were left with unknown victims, the bones and skeletal remains of unknown victims. Their families wanted closure. Um, and so forensic anthropologists were called in along with other um, investigators and um, forensic specialists to help identify these human remains so that their family could be provided with that closure. Um, this is also a process that's used when identifying victims of war or burn victims or skeletal remains that are found in the woods. Um, anthropologists are called in to help determine uh, how a person died or who they were before they died or um, how they died. Now, when skeletal remains are found, the bones and surrounding area is treated like a crime scene. So the scene is going to be secured. It's going to be searched to locate all of the bones if the bones are scattered. Um, and then any other evidence that might arise at the crime scene, it will be packaged according to chain of custody. And everything works just like we talked about in Unit 1. Um, so basically the scene is documented and processed. Uh, then a forensic anthropologist is going to be called in to use their knowledge of skeletal anatomy to help identify those remains. And they don't usually work alone. They're going to work with other forensic professionals or other forensic specialists like pathologists or toxicologists or odontologists uh, to help sort of relay the clues or what one uh, professional might discover might help another professional. So they're going to communicate and collaborate with one another uh, ultimately to figure out how a person died. When the skeletal remains are found, they're first going to be to, um, observed and examined to determine if they are in fact human remains. And if the remains are human, a biological profile is going to be created. Now, there's some controversy that exists here. We'll get into that in future lessons. Um, but for the most part, if a biological profile is created, uh, then there's going to be four components to that. So we're looking at the sex of the person, the age, the height, and the ethnic origin. Investigators can also, in some cases, extract DNA from human or skeletal remains or even dental remains. Um, which is definitely helpful in an investigation. And some bones and teeth provide extra clues that investigators can use in their quest to identify human remains. So what makes bones so remarkably durable? Well, it's because um, bones contain calcium and phosphate. They also contain some bone cells. You can see here in the picture sort of the anatomy of the bone structure. Uh, Bones provide the framework for our body, so they have to be durable. Uh, you can see there's red marrow inside the bones that produce our body's blood cells. Just some facts about bones that you need to know. Adults, on average, contain 206 bones, whereas a baby contains approximately 207 bones. Um, excuse me, 270 bones. And you might ask the question, well, why do baby 
babies have so many more bones than the average adult. Well, during childhood, bones thicken, they ossify, and they grow longer, and this results in fewer bones in adulthood. So throughout our lifetime, bones are always being produced and repaired and broken down, um, which also provide clues uh, to forensic investigators and anthropologists when they discover these skeletal remains. Bones increase in length until the growth plate is ossified. That means when the bone actually replaces cartilage. So after the age of about 30, um, the process begins to reverse and bones will actually lose minerals and break down faster than they are built. All right, to end today's introduction to anthropology, I want you to do a deep dive into five cases. So you can see on the screen here, there are five cases that deal with forensic anthropology. They're interesting cases. So I want you to take a second to research each of those cases and just jot down a summary of each case and be familiar with each case before you watch the next video. Um, and in the next video, we are continuing on with our forensic anthropology lesson, but we are focusing on the human skull and what kind of clues the human skull, if found, uh, can give investigators. So I will see you in that next lesson.